decades of service in Washington, D.C., from the House of Representatives to the Governor's Mansion in Hawaii. Our very special guest, Neil Abercrombie, Governor of Hawaii. I'm David Perry, and this is 10%. My boyhood home of Richmond, Virginia, has been the home of patriots. We've had dozens of governors, and we've had over 40 presidents. But our newest state, the Aloha State, Hawaii, has had seven governors. And very proud today to have its current governor, Neil Abercrombie. Mr. Governor, welcome. Aloha. David. Aloha. Wonderful to be with you. You know, I, I've heard that joke so many times yes. in that wonderful movie, Miss Congeniality, where yes. they have Miss Hawaii. Yes. And uh, the girl says to her, well, how do you say hello? And she says, aloha. Mm. And she says, well, how do you say goodbye? And she says, aloha. They said, don't you get confused on the phone? I mean, <laughs> I mean. No, we don't because uh, uh, aloha, uh, it means that we're happy to see you and occasionally happy to see you leave. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> Now, you what it really means is uh, we generally say when we say goodbye is ahui ho, and when that means until we meet again. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in Hawaii, the aloha spirit is such that uh, we not only want to welcome people and are happy to see them, but we also, when they leave, want to let them know that we're anxious to see them yet again. Yeah, and come back. Yes. The aloha spirit is something that you really feel as soon as you, whether it's yes. from a plane or a cruise ship, said foot in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I've been lucky to be there numerous times, most mm -hmm. recently a, a few weeks ago. Yes. How did a boy from Buffalo end up there in the governor's chair? Well, I, I know I, it's a long I, story. I, no, I sometimes <laughs> say carelessness and inattention, right, <laughs> may have been it. But I, I, I think that that uh, tells the, the story of Hawaii. How did a, a, a boy with a, a, a white mother uh, whose parents originally came from Kansas by way of Washington State and ended up in Hawaii, uh, and whose husband came from then colonial Kenya uh, as the first African-American student at the University of Hawaii. How did that child of, of, of that couple uh, become president of the United States? And uh, Barack Obama, of course, uh, was that. So it's the story of, of, uh, of Hawaii and uh, the spirit of aloha uh, is manifest not just in, in, in me becoming governor, but uh, in, uh, in uh, Barack Obama becoming president. Everyone who came to Hawaii came from someplace else, including the original uh, Polynesians, obviously who sailed across the Pacific by way of the stars, the first great navigators uh, across the whole ocean. So Hawaii was thrust up out of the sea by volcanic action, and then everything and everybody uh, who came there afterwards then made uh, those islands uh, the paradise that it is. And so we've always taken the attitude, everyone who has come, whether from hundreds and even thousands of years ago to someone who may be landing right now at Honolulu International Airport, that we're the stewards uh, of the land. It's our responsibility uh, to take care of the, uh, from the mountains to the sea, the Hawaiians say ahupua'a, from the mountains to the sea. Uh, our we, we are one with nature and uh, that spirit of aloha says that we, we're welcoming, we're patient, we're tolerant, we're kind, we're gentle, we have a sense of humility about our place. We're 2,500 miles away from the next largest land mass. So, we have to make our life together and the spirit of aloha to the degree that permeates our hearts and souls to that same degree then uh, do we let our diversity define us rather than divide us. Well I, I heard you say that uh, at an event earlier today mm -hmm. about how diversity is very much into the the fabric of what it means to be a modern Hawaiian. Yes. And also eco ecological mm -hmm. stewardship. I was talking to you about those beads you were wearing. And yes. I mean that's kind of a symbol of self-sustainability. Yes, as it's far a, as a kukui nut lei. Um, uh, the kukui nut, uh, uh, when uh, uh, gathered uh, in ancient Hawaii, was both a fuel and and food could be. Uh, um, the uh, uh, oil from it uh, could be burned and it could be used uh, as well 
ingested and mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it had a, a very felicitous effect uh, on your health and uh, so uh, it's it's something that we treasure and of course this constitutes a lay that I think goes well with my Zig Zane shirt. This is yeah. this is contemporary Hawaiian. This is what this uh, is what Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirts look like. Yeah, when you say like Aloha now. shirts, it's not Harry Truman <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, walking in Washington with you know the rayon shirt. Those 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 are uh, vintage. Yeah, I got a shirts. couple in my closet. Sure, and then and they're worth a lot of money now. Um, and uh, so there's been a whole spectrum. Change comes, uh, even with something like the Aloha shirt. Mm -hmm. And as I say, this is a contemporary. It happens to be a Zig Zane shirt designer. We have a lot of uh, great fashion. Uh, today in Hawaii that we think is very, very contemporary and uh, it's unusual, it's unique, but it's also, we think, universal in, in what it portrays. These are you know, a Hawaiian uh, motif, uh, uh, Polynesian symbols, uh, uh, sometimes of, uh, of the earth, of, of, uh, of, uh, of the sea, uh, of the various species unique to Hawaii and uh, Trans, translated and transposed uh, in, into fabric. Yeah. Now, you have been a member of Congress from Hawaii for mm -hmm. many years. First, you were appointed, or you won a special mm -hmm. election. Yes. And then you served 10 terms, correct? Yes. So 20 years in Congress. Yes. And now you've uh, won one term as governor. You're right. up for re-election. Yes. How many times have you stood before the electorate? <laughs> well, see, over the last <laughs> 44 years, uh, 34 times. You just a sadist or yeah. a masochist? Yes, I yes, guess yes it would right. Be. <laughs> or I'm trying to get it right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, um, but uh, that's primaries and general elections and special elections. It's it, it certainly was something that I could never have conceived coming from Buffalo mm -hmm. originally, uh, and uh, with statehood in 1959. Um, by luck of the, uh, to, to me, always uh, an incredible luck. Um, I was chosen to be a uh, teaching assistant in the sociology department. I always thought primarily not for my scholarship, I wish I could say that, but um, probably because I w had applied from the East Coast and I think they wanted a little cross-fertilization yeah. in, the, in the department. Um, and uh, so they gave me a chance and the second I landed in Hawaii, um, breathed that glorious air. You've been there, David. You, you know were what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, gentle breezes of the trade winds, uh, the uh, the bucket of stars tossed across the sky at night, the plumeria in the air in, in Manoa Valley, where I, mm -hmm. I went behind Waikiki. Um, I live now. We live now uh, about a, uh, two blocks from the very first night that I spent in Hawaii uh, 55 years ago. And uh, uh, the, the, moment, the night, that night, that very first night, I knew I was not only in paradise, but where I wanted to spend the rest of my life, yeah. right there in that spot. You know, it's, I have been around politicians all my life, and you seldom hear Poor them. Thing. I know, I'm <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, I don't know, there's uh, indulgences in yes, heaven, as my yes, mother yes. would have said. Mm -hmm. You don't hear them get passionate often about the place they represent. Not in this way. I mean, mm -hmm. I love Virginia, but, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you hear Chris Christie talking about the beauty of New Jersey. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> but you speak about Hawaii yes. not in political oh, terms, no. but in human well, terms. Well, it's paradise. And uh, I think that's why those of us privileged to be there mm -hmm. uh, in Hawaii, um, we love it. Love, 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 I talked about the shirt, yeah. the symbols, and so on. Um, uh, the music of Hawaii. Take the music of Hawaii. Um, it's it's about love. It's about the land. It's about beauty. It's it's not about brutality. It's not about vengeance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, um, discouraging or, or demeaning. Uh, it, it it it's lyrical uh, and a celebration of life, and, and with a sense of humor too, with with a, with a lightheartedness. Yeah. Uh, what we call kolohe, uh, where you can be a rascal uh, and make a, f a little fun of yourself. A man of in front of yourself and 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 uh, and the lightness of being, if you will, uh, as well as as a celebration of the of the beauty and our responsibility toward it, uh, uh, the sea, the sky, uh, uh, the land, uh, something to be treasured and uh, and uh, taken care of. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, I guess, yes, there's, there's a love there. People born in Hawaii, those fortunate enough to be able to live in Hawaii, I think take a special interest in seeing to it that we do our part 
to make sure that, that uh, we carry on that legacy right. of love. What's the biggest misconception about Hawaii? I mean, I know sometimes as a political junkie, mm -hmm. you know, I, I watch the returns in every state. Mm -hmm. And even as a Californian sometimes, it really annoys me that people say elections for the presidency are over oh. by the time you get to Kansas. I mean, right. yeah, you know. Well, yes, um, today's capacity to communicate, if you will, although I'm not so sure that that necessarily gives you any more knowledge yeah. about anything. You may get more information, but not much knowledge. Um, yeah, uh, well, there's, there's a certain exotic quality. Uh, when you say Hawaii, um, there, it, there's, it, there's a dreamlike uh, context that gets established in people's minds, a, a kind of uh, exotic romanticism, um, which is not unwarranted. I mean, uh, there, there's lots of worse things to, yeah, to, to happen pretty, to yeah. you. Yeah, when you say where you're from and somebody snarls or, or look, looks grim about it, it's quite the opposite. When you say Hawaii, Almost the, the whole world over, it'll bring a, pe a smile to people's face. They're not quite sure. They may think Hawaii Five-O, or uh, Blue Hawaii with Elvis Presley, or yeah. or something. But th that's okay. That's that's the spectrum of of uh, of uh, of um, uh, recognition uh, or perception about Hawaii. But I I I, I think principally what what happens uh, in in people's minds when they say Hawaii is it it brings the idea of of uh, uh, of, of paradise, you'll be welcome. Mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll be relaxed. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a place where you're where you're comfortable, where where aesthetically you'll you'll fit, and 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 the stress will have disappeared. It's probably as close in anybody's mind to the idea of what could happen in paradise as we can mm. find on Earth. In, in the last few moments of our first half, I want to talk to you about another personal matter. In sure. the second half, we're going to talk about policy and what it's sure. like to be governor and run for governor. But you've got quite a, a wonderful helpmate in the First Lady of Hawaii as well. Oh, you're well. kind to say. Yeah. I'm sure she appreciates that. Yeah, I mean, she's, uh, tell me her career, doctor. Yes, um, I, uh, Dr. Nancy Ellen Carraway. Uh, and as uh, I, I usually introduce myself, I say, I'm Neil Abercrombie, I'm uh, Dr. Nancy Ellen Carraway's <laughs> lovely husband. You know, because you always get the lovely yeah. spouse. Well, I'm the lovely spouse. And uh, um, we met uh, in, uh, uh, after I was elected to the State House of Representatives, she, she came to interview me for a, uh, uh, a project she had. Um, she'd just gone back to school and was interviewing me for a, a, a project. We met that way. And uh, so, uh, subsequent to meeting and uh, getting together, she got her her uh, B.A., uh, her M.A., a master's in, in political science, uh, a master's from Columbia in journalism, and her Ph.D. at the University of Hawaii uh, in political science. So, uh, she has pursued an academic uh, and research career since then. Has, and, and has she enjoyed being a, a political wife? I remember my husband once told me <laughs> he'd support me doing anything except yeah. running for office. Yeah. I told him he was safe. Yeah, well, yes. My, my, my wife has had and has today uh, pursued her independent career uh, uh, throughout uh, our marriage, and uh, happily so. And um, I think that's very, very important to have a partner and, and uh, whose existence is not an extension of yours so much as is complementary to yours. Right, right, right. And her uh, her uh, emphasis has been on uh, on uh, particularly on human trafficking and uh, um, abuse, uh, spousal abuse uh, areas, and so on. She's she's both from an academic and from a, a practical point of view. Her latest uh, uh, effort, if you will, uh, has to do with the area of, of domestic workers and making sure helping to get the second. Bill, uh, Governor Cuomo and the uh, New York mm -hmm. State Legislature passed the first bill for protection of domestic workers, and Hawaii uh, s followed soon upon it. And my wife has has been one of the uh, um, uh, key figures in, in making that happen. I'm very proud of that. Well, we've been speaking with Governor Abercrombie about his history, his life, and his partner. In the next half of the show, we're going to be talking about some other partners, LGBT partners, who Governor Abercrombie's work made possible to have loving legal relationships. We'll be right back. And welcome back. I'm David Perry, the host of 10%. Our guest today, Neil Abercrombie, Governor of the State of Hawaii. Welcome back. Thank you very much, David. You know, I heard you say something interesting earlier today. Mm -hmm. You called what we here in California refer to as marriage equality, mm -hmm. or quote-unquote same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. You referred to it as marriage 
equity. What yeah. do you mean by that and how did you come to that definition and please explain to our viewers why you're one of the leaders in that. Well, I, I, thanks for saying one of the leaders. Uh, uh, my thought always was is that this has to do with equity. To the degree and extent you could segment out same-sex marriage, the Jews, the blacks, the you name it, mm -hmm. right? That way you narrow cast what's being discussed. We uh, have the obligation as, as elected officials to uh, uphold the Constitution of the United States for everybody. That's equity. You have to have more than just equality. Yeah, equality can go across the board, yes, in terms of, uh, but is the opportunity for equity so that, that you can achieve something substantial on the basis of its merit, is that possible? It might, it might seem a small point to somebody, but you can take uh, Judge uh, Walker. That's right, Judge who Walker, overturned Prop 8 in Prop California. Prop 8. He might have recused himself, and everybody would have understood. As a gay that, judge. As a gay judge. But wait a minute. Hold it. Should a heterosexual judge then excuse himself or herself on the basis that they're making a determination with regard to marriage and equity yeah. on the basis of their heterosexuality? No. The question here is, is how do you take the constitutional admonition uh, with respect to uh, equality and equity and turn it into a, a, a realistic capacity to, to not only engage in it but achieve it. And so my, my thought always uh, was in, in that regard is what we're talking about here, and I said this when I, when I signed the, the uh, SB1, mm -hmm. um, which was called the marriage equity, I mean mm -hmm. the marriage equality bill, uh -huh. uh, legislatively speaking, is that I said, for those who have been invisible, not just to the world, but to themselves, they're made visible today. Right, right now, right with this signature, they're visible to them, not just to the world, but to themselves. And that, to me, is what equity is all about. Right. That, that it's, it's not just on the page. The Constitution doesn't guarantee good government, David. It guarantees us the opportunity. It depends on the talent in the room and the will to succeed. Well, and, but sometimes people like you, other mm -hmm. governors in the United States who've signed similar laws, mm -hmm. They not only take heat for it, uh, they take some abuse and they actually take some political hits. Had well, <laughs> uh, we had to call a special session. I knew this was going to be volatile. And there were literally thousands of people uh, who had, not just for me, but for the whole issue, some commentary that probably wouldn't have been too popular uh, in, uh, in, well, it wasn't, of course not. There was denunciations and so on. Uh, but there were also people who were making eloquent pleas for an understanding of what equality and equity was all about. And we prevailed uh, with that. But I didn't do that by denigrating other people. I went to uh, the, the communities of faith that, for example, in the religious segment uh, of the population that were opposed. I went to them and said, I understand what the First Amendment says uh, with regard to church and state and religious freedom. And we're going to see to it that, that for those of you who cannot abide this in terms of your religious faith, you're not going to be compromised on that. Right. But we're going to insist where public accommodations is concerned that not only the, the letter, uh, not only the spirit of the law, but the letter of the law is going to be obeyed, and I think that's what we accomplished. Have you ever regretted it for one moment? Oh, no. Uh, no, no, well, no. What I regret is that we had to have the conversation yeah, yeah. in the first place, and that the spirit of aloha that I mentioned in the previous segment, our, our openness to one of the, the patience and the kindness and the goodness. Life is short enough and difficult enough without looking for ways to divide ourselves. Mm -hmm. Our diversity must define us rather than divide us if we're going to be uh, truly following the basic humanity that should be um, uh, ubiquitous, that should be with all of us. All right. One of the other issues that you're well known for besides issues of social justice is the ecology of Hawaii, mm -hmm. you know, our fragile ecosystem. Yes. How much does global warming and what's going on around the world worry you as governor? Well, um, as a Hawaiian, yes. Well, the the, the president, uh, I think, recognized that we we certainly have a stake in that in 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 our uh, island uh, paradise, uh, uh, and uh, he named me to the task force on climate change and, and uh, climate preparedness and resiliency uh, because we have a state plan. Uh, a proposal as to how we're going to deal with global warming and uh, and climate change. It's certainly not foolproof. It's, uh, it certainly is going to require international cooperation, let alone national commitment. But uh, we we have to face up to that, and we're well aware of it uh, uh, being utterly dependent as we are uh, on nature. 
Yeah, because I mean, Hawaii is going to be severely impacted as the mm -hmm. ocean levels we rise. We all are. There's no question about that uh, at this stage. And so, um, uh, environmental uh, concern and preparedness is not uh, merely an aspiration for us. It's a question of our survival. Yeah. In our last couple of minutes, you've had four years almost as governor yes. of Hawaii, assuming you win re-election. What well, are you going to do? In the <laughs> <laughs> I don't assume that, but uh, I'll, I'll take good wishes. Yeah, on there that. you go. Mm -hmm. uh, what's up for the next four years? What are your priorities? Well, that uh, that's that's an. Uh, we came out of a situation of uh, really dire fiscal straits, uh, of deficit uh, situation, unfunded liabilities, uh, some great difficulties, high unemployment, those things that affected a lot of other people, and and by uh, um, tightening our belts uh, in terms of. Uh, of pay and, and benefits to, to get through the, 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 uh, 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 the savings we needed to get to get our deficit and by focusing on uh, infrastructure, uh, uh, investment, capital improvement projects that, that had a public utility, airports, highways, bridges, et cetera. Um, we were able to come back and we've turned a, 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 a 200 plus million dollar deficit into an 800 million dollar plus uh, positive balance in three years. It sounds like a Republican. We got, yeah, well, um, my, uh, my <laughs> attitude is you, is you can't have social progress, uh, you can't have social justice in a meaningful way unless you have a solid financial foundation and confidence by everybody that the economy and the fis uh, fiscal structure is solid. So we think we've achieved that and uh, so the next three years we're going to do, uh, uh, or the next four years I hope, um, uh, with the approval of our voters, we're going to be concentrating on getting preschool, universal preschool for our kids, seeing to it that all of our children get the digital, digital devices that they need mm -hmm. in order to be able to compete in the 21st century. We don't want a, a child's uh, a guardian or a parent's economic status to be the criterion upon which he or she will be able to succeed in life. We know that 85% of a child's brain is, is developed by the time they're five. They need mm -hmm. that support. We need to ch uh, change our energy quotient. We're importing oil and coal right now so that we have the highest kilowatt, 40 plus cents a kilowatt hour. And that's not sustainable. No, it, it, it devours the, the, uh, the disposable income of the working middle class. So it, whether it's energy, whether it's education, uh, whether uh, it's uh, um, uh, um, infrastructure that uh, will benefit uh, Hawaii for the future, including housing uh, uh, as well as, as uh, hospitality. Um, we think we've got a combination that benefits our people and benefits all those who want to come and visit us. Well, after your re-election, hopefully we'll have you back on. Well, I hope all the listeners at 10 percent will say, that's where I want to be to help uh, <laughs> Governor Abercrombie celebrate that well, next well, administration. Thank you. <laughs> we've been speaking with Governor Neil Abercrombie of Hawaii. I'm David Perry. Aloha. Aloha. From this week's 10%. You bet. Thank you very much, David. Aloha.